The article goes on. I ask why he spends his time trying to convince people that the moon landings were faked. White's got a website, a YouTube channel, etc. It's important to get the truth out, he says. But you said you're an atheist too, and a lot of people believe that God exists. So why don't you spend your time on the God issue? Why is the moon one so much more important to you? That question gives White a pause. None of my others did. After the pause, he tells me that he wanted to be an astronaut as a kid. Ah, see, White never became an astronaut, and now it's too late for him. So I could speculate that, after White was first told he couldn't become an astronaut, for this reason or that, he became envious of those who'd already flown into space and to the moon. I could then speculate that White's emotion led his intellect, i.e., if I can't fly to the moon, then no one can, or has, and therefore, the moon landing must have been faked. At least the reporter says that this is speculation. I can emphatically assure you that this speculation is false. Why is it that you've um, decided to take the, the moon landing on? Like, I'm, you know, I'm heavily involved in the 9-11 truth movement, and we have uh, plenty of rock-solid uh, forensic evidence plus uh, physical evidence that, that proves our case, and we, we can't really get a hearing. But we're often said that we're, um, you know, we're, we're people that don't believe that, that people landed on the moon. They often use that to uh, bring uh, disrepute to us. Now, so what makes you want to get embroiled in a subject that, that comes with so many um, barbs and entanglements? Well, as I... Well, as I said, when I was a kid, I wanted to be the first man to walk on Mars. You know, I had dreamed of becoming an astronaut, you know, when I grew up. And uh, later on in life, I hear about the Apollo moon landing conspiracy, right? And so I decided to do my own investigation on that. And um, along the way, I came across all these these um, websites that try to prove that the moon missions were real. But what these guys, what these webmasters actually do, rather than providing any um, valid evidence, what they do is they present this this, this garbage, and in some cases downright um, character assassination against anyone who even considers the idea that it was all faked, and even put, put words in, in their opponent's mouths. So basically I decided eventually that, well, it's time for someone to stand up against these these guys and show them what they really are. Yeah, good so on that, you, Joe, because we get the same with 9-11 truth, you know, we, or, or, or global warming, um, any anything that we sort of look at empirical uh, sort of facts, um, you know, scientific uh knowledge of, of, of you know if you if you sort of present some of this really rock solid information and people just start using character assassinations the las vegas weekly goes on to see whether there's more to the story i walk into the green room and ask savage himself turns out there is more to the story my complaint wasn't with what he said during the speech savage tells me my complaint was what he did afterwards what did he do he monopolized me. He kept asking me more and more questions, and he saw that there were a hundred people standing around, trying to ask me their own questions, and trying to get autographs. But he wouldn't let any of them get a word in. I didn't go to Tam to appease any one guy. I wouldn't call what I did monopolizing. I asked Savage one question, and one follow-up to that question. I tried to ask a second question, but was physically shoved away by his minder. Here's what happened after the Q&A session. I've, I've got word out to uh, Simon Pegg's friend. Okay. Simon's asking me, and also John Landis is a friend. Okay. Also, so All right. I'm reaching out. Do you know Mark Utal? Yeah. 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 Mark and I are close friends. Yeah, he's, he's become a you know, okay. friend of mine. I met him at the <laughs> Hotel in Vegas. Hey. Okay. Thank you. Sorry if I sound a little um, annoyed in the um, my tone of voice, but uh, there's another question I wanted to ask you about. Yes. Another, there's more of a correction or something like that. On the program, basically, when you were bouncing the lasers, you, were, you said that it was impossible to bounce them off the moon's bare surface, right? Yes. You said it's possible. Are you aware that um, in the 1962 and 1963, both MIT and the Crimean Astrophysical Observatory also did that? They bounced lasers off the moon's bare surface and received its, its signal back to Earth. They, were, they managed to, to detect it. Bob, I was not aware of that. You were not aware of that? Do you have any comments on why the guys at the Apache Point Observatory couldn't get the signal back? Yeah, well, uh, since I haven't met the guys from MIT who say that they were able to do it, I trust the guys from Apache that said they, it was not possible unless you had a retroreflector on the surface of the moon. I understand. And uh, just another thing too, are you aware? Are you finished? 
Uh, just one, just, just follow up. Yeah, 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 sorry, I'll just, just quick. Uh, now you're aware that... I really think you've had your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're very welcome to take. Great show. What am I bid for Avon Savage's iPod? I missed it the last time. <laughs> just, uh, just one quick, quick question. Are you familiar? Is it, it's just quick. Are you familiar with the so the um, Soviet retro reflector on there? There's yeah, a lot right. of people around here, man. All right, fair enough. All right. So yeah. My second question was going to be about the Lunacod rover, which also deployed a retro reflector. Something that the Mythbusters never mentioned on the show. Given the hostility that I usually receive on YouTube by individuals who disagree with me, I expected a similar reception here. Instead, I was surprised to find that there were those who actually congratulated me. As one of the guests told me, it takes a lot of guts to fly all the way from Australia to Las Vegas and attend a conference dominated by very outspoken individuals who insist that Apollo was real. But it seems that not all were happy with the little uproar I caused. As was evident when Phil Plate turned around and refused the interview he promised me. So you changed your mind about interviewing me because you believe that I'll take you out of context? Um, that's that's a, a minor fear, but honestly, I feel... Do you want me to talk into the pen? Would that help? I actually <laughs> feel that uh, uh, having seen your videos, having listened to you talk, no matter what I say, you're not going to hear my actual words. Well, I'm just asking I've you... Seen, you. You bring up points that are out of context. Uh, no, I don't bring up points that are out of context. In fact, I wanted to ask you to validate the context of one of your flames. You said that millions of I'm times... I'm not answering any of your questions. Well, is this a simple not. question, mate? I don't trust you. It is that simple. Well, I don't trust I don't, you either. I can tell you that now. Know. And that's why I'm not going to do an interview with you, and, and we really are done. Uh-huh. Well, could I just ask you a simple question, mate? You said millions of times that Bill Casings denied the possibility of any space travel. I'm just asking, where did you claim that? You where did he claim that? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Are you Dave or Dave? Dave. Well, either one. Either one. I answered above. <laughs> and there you go. The silent treatment all over again. Isn't it funny? Phil Plate will go on a national radio show and debate Joe Rogan on the alleged moon landings. Yet he won't do a one-on-one -on -one interview with me on the grounds that I wouldn't believe anything he'd say. That's not true. I believe some things he says, like his statement that, quote, if you were standing on the moon, you would indeed see the stars, even during the day. We were never able to see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon by eye without looking through the optics. Uh, I don't recall during the period of time that we were photographing the Sona Corolla what, uh, what stars we could see. I don't remember seeing any. The fact that Plate would try to avoid talking to me was ever so predictable. 